Joining us now, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, and with me at the table, former top prosecutor at the DOJ and MSNBC legal analyst Andrew Weissman, and host of Politics Nation right here on MSNBC and president of the National Action Network, Reverend Al Sharpton. Uh, Leader Jeffries, it's really good to have you. Thank you for being here. I just spoke a moment ago with Senator Sheldon Whitehouse about just Justice Samuel Alito and these flags. He seems to, to think it is pretty clear that there needs to be a discussion about recusal for Justice Alito. Where do you stand? There's no circumstance where Justice Samuel Alito should be permitted uh, to preside with respect to any case that has to do with the January 6th violent insurrection. He absolutely should recuse himself. He has disqualified himself in terms of either the appearance of impartiality or actual impartiality. So how do you get him to reconsider? How do you get the Chief Justice to get him to even consider this? This is part of the challenge that we confront with the runaway Supreme Court that appears to want to conduct itself as if the judiciary is above the law. Now, for years, members of Congress in both the House and the Senate have indicated that it's time for the Supreme Court to have an ethical code of conduct that is enforceable. Last year, Chief Justice Roberts did implement a code of conduct, but it appears to be voluntary and is being ignored. And so as a result of that, the first opportunity that we have in the Congress I believe we need to have a real conversation about a legislative effort to implement an ethical code of conduct on the Supreme Court that is enforceable. They are the only branch of government currently that can operate with impunity. Congress has an ethical code of conduct enforceable under law. The executive branch has an ethical code of conduct enforceable under law. We've got to get the MAGA extremists on the Supreme Court under control. So just to be clear, so just, when we're talking about these flags, one of them was the upside-down American flag. It was flown outside his, of his Virginia home in January 2020, 2021 after the insurrection while the court was considering a case regarding the election. Justice Alito says his wife was the one that flew it and that it was in uh, a dispute, done in a, in a dispute with one of the neighbors. The other flag was the uh, appeal to heaven flag. It's a flag of a pine tree. And that's been co-opted by Stop the Steelers as well, the religious portion of the Stop the Steelers. There's been no comment about this flag. This was flown outside of his Virginia or his New Jersey, excuse me, vacation home multiple times, according to the New York Times in 2023. These are the two flags at question here. When Republican senators are asked about this, they don't see that they're a big deal. Uh, they'll say that this is no. overblown in the media. Do you see any innocent explanation for the flying of these two flags at two separate homes during two separate periods? Do not see uh, any non-nefarious or innocent explanation. And if there is one, we haven't heard it from Supreme Court Justice Alito. It's not been forthcoming. I think his only response was to try and throw his wife under the bus, which was extraordinary. Uh, in and of itself for anyone to do, let alone uh, a Supreme Court justice, who, by the way, is having to deal with pending cases before the Supreme Court that involve the insurrectionist in chief, Donald Trump, involve people who violently assaulted the Capitol as part of the effort to undermine the peaceful transfer of power for the first time in American history. And that is why this is a serious issue. Part of the challenge that we confront at this moment is that the extreme mega Republican majority in the House of Representatives has zero interest in exercising any oversight authority over the out of control members of the Supreme Court, which is one of the things that will be before the American people on the ballot in November. If the Democrats retake control of the House, if the American public puts Democrats in control of the House, and say the American public allows Democrats to maintain control of the Senate, say the American public also allows Joe Biden to keep the White House, would you plan on doing something regarding Justice Samuel Alito, potentially trying to impeach him? Well, let's not put the cart before the horse. The first 
step will be to make sure that we engage in aggressive oversight to get an understanding of what's happening, why it's happening, and how we can stop this extremist behavior from ever happening again. The challenge right now is that even the Senate Democrats, though they are in the majority, uh, has the inability or does not have the ability, I should say, uh, to enforce subpoenas and try to ascertain uh, and obtain information uh, because Republicans in the Senate have the ability to block it because there is a 60-vote threshold with respect to subpoena enforceability. And, of course, under Chairman Jim Jordan and the chair of the Oversight Committee, and we see what a mess oversight has been throughout the entirety of this Congress, uh, they have zero interest in trying to rehabilitate uh, the credibility of the Supreme Court. Uh, we're going to have to step into this situation. It's not just Justice Alito. It's also Justice Thomas that has serious questions surrounding him regarding um, billionaire funding and lavish vacations. Uh, what he's taken from people who have arguments in front of the Supreme Court. He's also taken positions recently regarding our institutions. In the overturning of Roe v. Wade, he brought up Obergefell and, and gay marriage and suggested that he'd want to take another look at that. There's also now questions about him potentially wanting to take a look at uh, Brown v. Board of Education. What are your feelings about Justice Clarence Thomas? Well, Justice Clarence Thomas has long lost lost uh, his credibility in terms of an impartial figure or someone who was interested in the principles of liberty and justice for all or equal protection under the law. It's important for the American people to understand that if Roe v. Wade can fall, anything can fall. Social Security itself can fall. Medicare can fall. The Affordable Care Act can fall. Democracy can fall. Brown v. Board of Education can fall. As Justice Thomas made clear, in his concurring uh, observation and opinion yesterday. So everything we care about is going to be on the ballot in November, including getting the federal judiciary into a place uh, where it can actually administer the law and make decisions in a fair and impartial fashion, not lead an ideological effort to jam their right-wing views down the throats of the American people. Alito Jeffries, if um, Justice Alito does not recuse himself and he's part of uh, the court that rules on President, former President Trump's immunity case, which is set to come out any day now, um, and say that it gets kicked down to the lower courts and it's Justice Chuck Ken that now has to go through where the presidential immunity lies, do, is that going, in your opinion, to degrade the confidence in the court? Well, the court uh, has done a lot over the last several years to degrade public confidence in the institution. And, you know, that's quite unfortunate because we need a fair and impartial judicial branch as part of our constitutional architecture. And a handful of these MAGA extremists who are on the Supreme Court have pushed things too far in an extreme direction. I think we just have to continue to encourage the American people that at the end of the day, who they elect as president, who they elect into the United States Senate will help determine the future fate of the United States Supreme Court. And based on the view that the public lacks confidence in the Supreme Court, I'm hopeful that that will be a factor in November when people go to the polls. Alita Jeffries, Al Sharpton, good to see you again. We were together last night at the state dinner. I, I want to push a little on the idea of the uh, uh, Justice Alito throwing his wife in front of the bus. In fact, if in fact the Congress uh, is changed in terms of the Democratic leadership, of in which you're the head uh, or the leader in the House, and overtakes the Congress next year, is it not appropriate uh, to call before the House and or the Senate, at least the Judiciary Committee, a justice that may have been supporting an insurrection of the United States government? I mean, we're talking about not just a flag of protest. We're talking about a flag that happened right after January 6th. This was not after the election. This was after the insurrection. And I think the American people 
Republican, Democrat, right wing, left wing, have a right to know was he supporting an insurrection under oath? If he wants to throw his wife in front of the bus, let him do it under oath. But I think we have a right to know. If they can bring in everybody from Hunter Biden to whoever else in front of the Congress, isn't this serious enough to bring a sitting justice that possibly was supporting an insurrection of the government that he sits at the top of the judicial branch to swear him in under oath and find out exactly what he was saying in a statement right after the insurrection in two of his residents? It's an incredibly serious issue, Reverend Sharpton, for all of the reasons that you've articulated. In terms of the steps that we might take uh, in the new Congress, I don't want to get out ahead of either Chairman to be Nadler and the Judiciary Committee or Chairman to be Jamie Raskin and the Oversight Committee. I can say that they will be aggressive in their efforts to get an understanding of what is happening with Justice Alito, what has happened with Justice Thomas, and how do we uh, get the Supreme Court back on track? As, as a separate and co-equal branch of government, the House of Representatives has the responsibility to serve as a check and balance on an out-of-control executive branch or an out-of-control Supreme Court. James Madison said that Congress should serve as a rival, a rival to the other branches of government in order to make sure uh, that no one overreaches in a way that's inconsistent with our Constitution or our values. And so uh, I can certainly promise that we will engage in aggressive oversight of the United States Supreme Court if we move forward. That is what the public is demanding. Leader Jeffries, let me ask you about your branch of government. Um, Congressman McGovern the other day was, uh, his words were stricken from the record. He was talking about Donald Trump's legal troubles. Let's play them. I'd love to get your opinion on, on what happened after. A candidate for president of the United States is on trial for sending a hush money payment to a porn star to avoid a sex scandal during his 2016 campaign, and then fraudulently disguising those payments in violation of the law. He's also charged with conspiring to overturn the election. He's also charged with stealing classified information, and a jury has already found him liable for rape in, in a civil court. And yet, in this Republican-controlled House, it's okay to talk about the trial, but you have to call it a sham. We take down it's his words. It's okay to say the jury is rigged. Mr. Speaker, I demand that Trump his words be, be taken down. It's okay to say the court is corrupt, Gentlemen will suspend. but not Trump is corrupting the rule of law. Indiana, the demand that his words be taken down. Leader, what do you think of what happened there? I, I know that he said that he was found uh, liable for rape in a civil court. He was liable for, for sexual abuse. Other than that, what he's saying is true. I, I understand he was out of order. But what do you make of the demand to have his words stricken from the record? Congressman Jim McGovern uh, is a tremendous leader in the United States Congress. He was speaking the truth. And extreme MAGA Republicans clearly cannot handle the truth. At the end of the day, they don't work for the American people. They work for the insurrectionist in chief, who basically gives them orders, tells them when to jump, how high, when to show up, what red tie to wear, what uniform to perform under. And this is what we are unfortunately dealing with uh, in this do nothing extreme Republican Congress. And this was just one of the latest manifestations of it. Leader Jeffries, I was wondering if you could speak to the urgency of this situation involving Supreme Court Justice Alito and Thomas. And the reason I raise that is right now, there is a stay of the D.C. insurrection case. That is not going to trial because the Supreme Court has, has effectuated that stay. And for all we know, as we're sitting here, the reason that that is continuing, the reason we do not have a trial date and we do not have accountability um, can be because Justices Alito and Thomas are holding it, that they are writing a dissent, that they are not moving that case along. And these could be people who should not be sitting there. They should not be um, voting on something that they have a partisan interest in. And to me, I, I was wondering what can be done, because this isn't so much an issue 
of what will happen in the election, which I agree with you is, is something that will, people have to vote on. But there is a real consequence that is a serious one right now about just accountability when a grand jury has voted an indictment and the Supreme Court is basically standing in the way of the public's right to a trial. Well, the American people and their representatives in the United States Congress in both the House and the Senate are going to have to keep the pressure on the Supreme Court to be more transparent as it relates to uh, the reasons why Justice Thomas and Justice Alito have not recused themselves as it relates to any of these matters connected to the violent insurrection, the efforts to halt the peaceful transfer of power, the big lie, the criminal cases that are now pending against the former president. These are reasonable questions that the American people should have actual answers to, and they are not forthcoming. And this is an extraordinary thing because the judiciary branch is a branch where you actually need legitimacy and credibility and the full faith and confidence of the American people because the decisions that they issue basically are permanent and unappealable. And so that's why uh, in order for them to be received in a manner consistent with our country as a nation of the rule of law, anchored in the rule of law, there um, is a confidence deficit that's going to have to be confronted, and we're going to uh, use every tool that is available to us, though we are in the minority, uh, to try to get the truth put forward for the American people. Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries, thank you so much. I know we kept you a little bit more for a little bit longer than we intended to, but we appreciate you staying on and answering all of our questions. Thank you all.